Hello everyone. In the prior session, we covered prepaid expenses, which is one of the four types of adjusting entries. Today, we will continue working with prepaid or deferred expenses, but we will focus on one special type of prepaid expenses, which is called depreciation. And when you hear the word depreciation, the first thing that might come to mind is the loss of value. As you will see in this session, this is not the same as the depreciation for accounting purposes. We will explore what depreciation really is from an accounting perspective. And specifically, we need to understand a little bit more about the matching principle, how to prepare adjusting entries for depreciation. It's pretty straightforward. It's all the same entry, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, always the same. Obviously, you will be introduced to this account that I just mentioned, accumulated depreciation. Don't worry, we'll cover everything in depth. But this is what I'm just preparing you for this session. Stay motivated. Let's finish the prepaid expenses, get that out of the way, so we could move on to the three other types of adjusting entries. At the end, we will work a multiple choice questions to test ourselves to reinforce the concepts. And don't forget to go to Farhat Lectures for more practice. Let us start by discussing what is depreciation. Well, depreciation is an accounting method used to allocate the cost of a tangible fixed asset over its useful life. So don't confuse depreciation with lost of value. Lost of value means the asset lost value because of market conditions. That's not the same as depreciation from an accounting perspective. So what is depreciation? It's a cost allocation process. What is the purpose of it? Well, the purpose is to allow a business to spread out the expense of an asset over its period, matching the cost with the revenue generated. Let me explain. Let's assume you purchased a vehicle, a delivery car for your business, and you paid, the company paid, the cost of that vehicle or delivery truck is $10,000. This is the cost. The cost is an asset. The car, it's going to serve your business. And specifically, it's going to serve your business for five years. One, two, three, four, one more, five, five years. One, two, three, four, five. Let's make it four, okay? Four years. What's going to happen is this. We're going to take this $10,000 and we are going to allocate, spread it out over four years. Well, how much are we going to allocate over four years? Each year we would allocate spread out 2,500 of the expense. So notice this $10,000 of an asset will be expense, 2,000 of it will be expense each year. This expense is called depreciation expense, which is a cost allocation. Allocating what? Allocating the cost of a fixed tangible asset over its useful life happens to be four years. And the purpose of it is to expense the asset in the years the asset is generating revenues. Which, which, this is great. This is a great accounting concept because what we need to do, we need to, to comply with the matching principle. Matching principle means match expenses with your revenues. That's one. Two, and the going concern and accounting. Because this asset, we are assuming we're going to be in business at least four years. And that's why we depreciate the asset and not expense immediately when we buy it. Because the assumption is we're going to be in business in the next four years. Therefore, we spread out the cost to comply with the matching principle and comply with the going concern assumptions. Now, what type of assets are subject to depreciation? Do we depreciate all assets? And the answer is no. Depreciation is applied to tangible. Tangible means you can see them, you can touch them. Fixed asset, such as machinery, vehicle, equipment, warehouses, computers, furnitures. Assets that you can see, you can touch. And the nature of these assets, they last greater than one year. They, they are with us for several years. That's why we depreciate those assets 
over several periods. Now, depreciation does not apply to land. Now, why not? Well, when I ask this question in class, most students will answer because land don't lose value. And the answer is incorrect. The reason we don't depreciate land because when we purchase a truck or a building or a vehicle, we can estimate its life. We can estimate over how many years this asset would serve the business. The land, we have no life. We cannot estimate a life for a land. Theoretically, the land will have an unlimited life. Therefore, the land is not depreciable. We don't depreciate the land. Therefore, every time we have an asset, we have to determine its useful life. The useful life of an asset is an estimate. And notice in my examples, first I said, let's assume this delivery truck for five years, then I change it to four. It means it's an estimate. It's an estimate how long the asset will be productive and generate revenue for the business. So first, when we buy those tangible fixed asset, machinery, building, vehicles, equipment, the company will have to make a decision. And that decision is for how long this asset is going to generate revenue. And the period can vary depending on the type of the asset and its intended use. Now, everything I say about depreciation in this course, this is depreciation for financial accounting, not for taxes. Because for taxes, we totally use a different method because the government is not involved with taxes. We don't have to worry about this. But for financial accounting, the company will have uh, the options, the discretion, to choose the useful life of the asset. Now we're going to have one whole chapters about these type of assets. This is just an introduction just to help you with the adjustments. The other term we need to be familiar with is something called the salvage value. So when we buy an asset, you remember that truck that I purchased for 10,000? Well, this asset could have a salvage value. The salvage value is another estimate. It's an estimated value that how much we can sell this asset at the end of its four years. So for the purpose of my example, let's assume the amount is 2000. So this amount is subtracted from the asset cost to determine the amount to be depreciated. Now, if I include a salvage value, I'm going to take the cost 10,000 minus, minus 2000. What I'm going to be left is 8,000. 8,000 is the amount I am going to depreciate. So if I include the salvage value, it means I'm going to take this 8,000 and divide the 8,000 by 4, and each year I'm going to depreciate 2,000. Or I could also assume the salvage value is 0, and this is what I assumed earlier, and I have to take the 10,000 divided by 4. The salvage value is an estimated amount. Most companies estimate the salvage value to be zero because we don't know the future. Usually after you use an asset, you usually get nothing for it. And it's hard to estimate that figure. Usually companies will estimate this number to be zero. Now let's dive deeper into the depreciation methods. We have many methods. Several methods can be used, each affecting the expense reported differently. The most common methods include the straight line, the double declining, but we're going to focus on one method today, and that's the straight line. That's the most common method, because I don't want to look at other methods. We're going to have one whole chapter about this topic later on. So this method spread the cost of the asset evenly over its useful life. And this is what I just showed you. When I took the 10,000 initially, and I divided by five, I said 2,500 per year. It means every year I expense the same amount evenly over, I'm sorry, over four years. I said five years and I, I stuck with it from the beginning. Okay, over four years. So I'm going to depreciate this asset evenly. This is why it's called the straight line. Now, why is it called the straight line to be more specific? Because the amount is 2,500 for year one, two, three, and four. And if we draw a line, it looks like a straight line. It's the same amount every year because those are the year one, two, three, and four. That's why it's called the straight line. It's the same amount of depreciation. Now, how we compute the depreciation, there's a formula. We take the cost of the asset, how much we paid for the asset, subtract its salvage value, dividing this by the useful life of the asset. Now, the best way is to look at our trial balance because we did purchase a piece of equipment when we prepared this trial balance. And we paid for this piece of equipment 
$26,000. Now, if we take this asset of $26,000, we're going to estimate its useful life for five years. Now, we could do six, we could do four, happens to be five. I'm going to estimate the salvage value to be six. It means after five years, I can sell this asset for $6,000. What does that mean? It means the amount I can depreciate is 26 minus six. The amount is 20,000 is the depreciable amount. Now, this asset will serve me for five years. Therefore, I'm going to take 20,000 divided by five. And per year, I am going to depreciate $4,000. Now, for the sake of this example, if you don't remember, but I purchased this asset December 1st of year X5, and I am preparing my financial statements December 31st of X5. So all what I need is one month of depreciation. A 4,000 for the whole year, if I divide 4,000 by 12, I am going to depreciate approximately $333 per month. Now I need to book my depreciation expense. That's easy. I would always debit depreciation expense $333. Now for the sake of this, notice now I have a new account called depreciation expense on my worksheet and I have in there $333. Now this is the debit. What's the credit? And most students, what they do, they will jump right away and say, I need to credit equipment $300. $33.33. And the answer is you don't. You don't touch the fixed asset itself. You need to reduce this fixed asset. You need to reduce equipment, but you don't credit the equipment. What we do is we create a new account called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a new account accumulated depreciation this is a contra asset contra to this asset notice it, it takes a credit it's a negative asset it reduces the asset so we're going to reduce equipment without crediting the equipment and you're going to see shortly how you would show this on the balance sheet so accumulated depreciation is a contra asset it's a new account contra means the opposite it's a negative asset and always a contra asset exists to serve another asset. So this asset exists to serve equipment. Now, the, the debit is debit depreciation expense. This is the journal entry credit accumulated depreciation. And the easy thing about depreciation expense, the entry is always the same. Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Notice an expense went up and asset went down. You would say, how did the asset went down? Well, this is a negative asset. Negative. It's going to reduce my equipment by $333 indirectly. If we did not, if we did not, if we did not book this entry, if we did not, if we did not prepare the adjusting entry, the assets would have been 26,000. The assets are less. It's 26 minus 333.33 and expenses would have been understated because we would not have $33, uh, $333.33 of depreciation expense. And let's talk about something called the book value. The book value or the carrying value of the asset is the value of which the asset is recorded on the balance sheet. So let's see how things are recorded at the balance sheet. The asset is recorded on the balance sheet. Those fixed assets are computed by calculating the cost of the asset, taking the cost of the asset minus accumulated depreciation will give us the book value. So it's calculated by subtracting accumulated depreciation from the original cost of the asset. So the formula is the cost of the asset minus its accumulated depreciation. For example, for the asset that we have, it's 26,000 minus $333.33. By the end of year X5, the book value is $25,667.67. Now, a year later, we are going to book. You remember year one, we had depreciation only for one month. 
for year two we have a full year of depreciation and the yearly depreciation is 4,000 now we have a total of 4,333 and accumulated depreciation by year two because the term accumulated means it stays from year to year it accumulates therefore by the end of year two we'll take 26,000 minus 4,333 dollars the amount is the book value is 21,667 so the book value goes down as accumulated depreciation goes up so the book value goes down as accumulated depreciation goes up so let's show let me show you the presentation of the asset on the balance sheet on the balance sheet you would still show the equipment at 26,000 then you deduct less accumulated depreciation so this is a negative figure then you come up to the book or the carrying value of 25,667 by the end of year X5. So the so the presentation on the balance sheet would still show the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following terms describe the total amount of depreciation expense recorded since the acquisition of the asset? So what is this term? Is it accumulated depreciation? Is it contra account? Is it book value is it fair value and I'll have to say that the definition itself is pretty much self-explanatory well why because if you look at the definition recorded since the acquisition it means how much has been accumulating and the answer is accumulated depreciation you cannot have any doubt about this now the type of accumulated depreciate the type of accumulated depreciation is a contra asset this is the type of accumulated depreciation the type of the account the type of the account is accumulated depreciation the book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation that's the book value of the asset and the fair value is how much something is worth today if we sell it it has nothing to do with the depreciation expense so make sure you are familiar with all these terms now what should you do to really learn more about this topic adjustments depreciation expense accumulated depreciation go to farhatlectures.com if you are a financial accounting student taking courses invest in yourself accounting is worth it the next thing we're going to look at is additional adjustments deferred revenues uh, and deferred revenues, unearned revenues, accrued revenues, accrued expenses. There's a lot to learn about adjustments. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.